Nigeria's fiscal sustainability is becoming a growing concern as the country's total public sector debt stock has surged from 46.25 trillion naira to 81 trillion naira as revealed in the Debt Sustainability Report published by the Debt Management Office, DMO. Now, findings have shown that Nigeria's debt servicing cost has increased by 55.71% to 1.24 trillion naira in three months. According to data obtained from the Debt Management Office, between October and December 2022, Nigeria spent 406.77 billion naira on domestic debt servicing, while it spent $312.27 million on external debt servicing, giving a total of 550.51 billion naira. However, between January and March 2023, Nigeria spent 874.13 billion naira on domestic debt servicing, while it spent $801.36 million on external debt servicing, giving a total of 1.24 trillion naira. We will keep our eye on Nigeria's fiscal sustainability. Also, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, has urged the federal government to take the measures in response to the rise in inflation and its impact on households. Well, stay with us as we analyze these issues. I am Justin Akadonye. Business Insight starts right now. Welcome back. Before we get to the matter of the day, let us just uh, show you just how to write an informal proposal. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Writing an informal proposal. The thought of writing a proposal overwhelms many people, but the task does not have to be daunting. Informal proposals are written when people need to ask permission to make a purchase, undertake a project, or write a paper. This type of proposal is a way of persuasively putting forth an idea and asking for action to be taken on that idea. When writing a proposal, consider who will read the proposal and what that person may or may not already know about what you are proposing. Follow these steps when writing a proposal. 1. State your purpose. Do this clearly and concisely so that the reader knows immediately why you are writing. 2. Give some background information. Explain why you are proposing your suggestion so that the reader has a better understanding of the problem. 3. State a solution to the problem. This is where you give specifics about your suggestion. 4. Show costs. Lay out any costs that will be involved. 5. Conclusion. Wrap it up by restating the problem and the proposed solution. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am being joined by Gospel Obele, uh, economist, and together we'll be looking at uh, Nigeria's public debt stock and, of course, the issue of inflation, how it's impacting on Nigerians. Many thanks for joining me, Gospel Obele. Thank you for having me, Jay. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Now, according to the Debt uh, Sustainability Report published by the DMO, Nigeria's total debt stock has surged from 46.25 trillion naira to 81 trillion naira. Do you share any concerns as by the country meeting up with its obligations, judging by the present uh, day realities? Well, um, the best we can do right now is to restructure uh, obligations uh, in terms of servicing obligations and, um, if possible, even restructure repayment and all of those dynamics. Um, and that's to safe to say reasons why the current president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is very much inclined on the revenue side and closing up all the necessary gaps that exist, you know, to, to fix these issues. However, um, there is now need to internally begin to rethink and rework the economics of debt financing, um, which technically we can't really do without because uh, we are not even generating enough. So whatever President Bola Ahmed seeks to achieve or seeks to do within the context of um, revenue mobilization will not still be enough because the markets and uh, the productive sectors are not really, really working at you know maximum potential or even mid-level potential to generate the weight of revenue that's required to finance developmental projects. So however, there's still going to be some form of reliance or debt financing. But we're expecting that some little more 
um, uh, the leverage around investors' confidence has been built due, due to the unification of the rates recently would enable that conversation, you know, and that negotiation of debt, debt servicing, debt obligations as we go on into the future. All right, now let's still stay with the report. According to it, the federal government's projected revenue of 10 trillion now would push the debt to GDP ratio close to about the 40% limit uh, that is reaching about 37.1%. In comparison, the debt service to revenue ratio would come in as high as 73.5%. I just want you to break all of that down. What does that really mean? Sorry, say again. I said that there's um, some figures that was released uh, by the DMO talking about um, our debt uh, service ratio and all of that. But let me specifically quote the report. It said the federal government's projected revenue of 10 trillion naira would push the debt to GDP ratio close to about 40% limits. In comparison, the debt service to revenue ratio would come in as high as 73.5%. What does all of that mean? Yes, thank you so much. Debt servicing to revenue ratio simply means that the amount of your revenue garnered every year, all right, that fiscal year that is used to service debt. So if you're looking at as 75%, it means that the amount, that means 75% um, um, of total government revenue on the very, at the very least of things will be used to service debt. And servicing debt does not necessarily mean that you're repaying it. It technically means that you are paying the interest charge on those debts, and maybe a little percentage of the principal, depending on the agreement and restructuring um, contracts you had with the principal. So um, um, what, what that simply means is that there may be little or nothing significantly left you know for financing um public sector or you know even public sector finance or public expenditure to a very large extent and it's also a bit worrisome again because when you also look at the block of revenue potential of the 2023 budget and you're taking 75 percent of that of that chunk for for servicing it tells us that we are in a really really fiscal mess you know and there are big concerns around what fiscal sustainability means so give or take you know, the primary, the primary um, um, low-hanging fruit for the president now would be to expand revenue. Because if you expand revenue, it means that you'll be taking a lesser percentage of the revenue to service debt. Yeah. And technically means you have more money to fund your developmental aspirations. Secondly would be to also leverage, you know, the growing, so quote unquote, the perceived growing investors' confidence, you know, and then take advantage of that to, you know, uh, uh, find ways to rake in more uh, development financing streams for our uh, infrastructure investment purposes. The very large uh, big ticket sustainability uh, uh, um, pathway mm. in the whole of this thing, I mean, Hello, yeah, I mean, the, the only, the, the, the most sustainable way around this whole mess to a very large extent, will be to ensure that debt financing and also extra revenues that are being raised into public expenditure are used in critical sector that can help us, you know, unlock productivity mm. and revenue and FX receipts as quick as possible. Mm. You know, once we can begin to achieve that, it's a lot easier for us to service debt, you know, repay back as much as we can, which also grows some form of confidence within the ecosystem, as well as also grow our market capabilities, you know, to fund our developmental aspirations ourselves. So more monies will be required to jumpstart the Nigerian economy, and part of sustainability becomes on are we making enough, mm -hmm. and how do we expand the market to make enough so that that 75% give or take can shrink based off on you know, increased revenue uh, ta targets and uh, and all that. Okay, so just before we leave off this um, issue and talk about inflation uh, in a moment, you talked about uh, the new uh, measures uh, that the president has put in place uh, in recent times. Now, but my question right now would be, how confident uh, are you with um, the fact that um, the last time um, assembly actually raised the limit of um, the ways and means, and uh, what uh, implications are we going to be seeing uh, anytime soon? Uh, well, um, we're expecting that many of these policies, I mean, the ways and means and all that, let's not forget that uh, a lot of things are really in the developing stage. There's a new administration, you know, new set of lawmakers, you know, and, and to a very large extent, you know, what's the uh, sustainability of our regulatory frameworks or legal framework, you know, to thrive you know, beyond all of these economics of change that we find right now. All right. So that's very critical for us to, be able to achieve the goal of this bill or this act mm. that has been um, designed or rolled out in the first place. Now, any form of interruption 
on the execution process of it being the fact that government has changed hands you yeah. have new people coming to the space and they still need to settle into the government you know we're still in the setting we're not even up to 90 days years all right so yeah. A lot borders heavily at risk of execution, mm. knowing fully how the Nigerian space, you know, thinks about policy, thinks about rolling out bills and act, and thinks about those who would take those things and run with them. All right, so what's the economics of this change and how would it impact on the overall objective of these policies and acts that's been introduced? Let's not forget also the president has also sought to change the board um, of many of the parastatals right yes, now in Nigeria, you know, and you, they, 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 there are lots of prestators whose, who's, um, sorry, the success of this bill, you know, is largely dependent on, you know, the institutional strength of these prestators. All right. So, will it make or break, you know, the future of this policy in context to it delivering its objective? Yeah. And and these are the rising developing questions that uh, we're envisaging. So, for now, it's a, a ticket of let's watch how the process uh, evolves who is executing what, right. and to what extent we can really lift up on the positive side. Um, of these bills, you know, going to market and helping us deliver on the objectives. All right. All right. It's still business insights on Plus TV Africa. We still have Gospel or Billy with us in the house. Uh, we'll take a very quick break and we'll be turning our attention to inflation in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs> 